Last night, I watched Joe Biden give his acceptance address to the Democratic National Convention. It may well have been one of the best speeches of his entire career, a long career. It may have been his best speech ever. I'll leave that to others to decide. But when it was over, I sat there staring at the television screen, completely dumbfounded. I wasn't dumbfounded because of anything he had said. I was dumbfounded because what he said was totally out of character with what I'd heard during the convention on Wednesday night, Tuesday night, and Monday night. And that disconnect between what they had been saying for the previous three days and what he said on Thursday night just reinforced a conclusion I'd already reached that the Democrats know they're going to lose and that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are simply expendable. What they're looking out for now is the future of their party. And in this video, I'm going to explain why I believe that. A political convention is basically a glorified sales pitch. And when you're pitching something, a product, a program, uh, a book, in a book proposal, you're trying to get a publisher to publish your book, you want all the various components. If it's a presentation, you want all the people all working together to reinforce the central argument. That's how you make YouTube videos. You know, you have a point you want to make, you have a hook to so bring people in, you deliver your content, and then you wrap it up. And all the parts are supposed to fit together. They're all supposed to support whatever the theme of the video is. That's just how you do things. And that's the way a political convention should work. What's the point of a political convention? Like I said, it's a sales pitch. For what? To elect a president and a vice president. These are your candidates, and you're pitching them to the American people. Everything in a political convention should be geared to that theme, to that object. And the theme, the themes that are going to be used in the campaign should be those of the candidate. In this case, Joe Biden. So if Joe Biden is going to be your nominee and you want him to win, you should get his themes from him. What's he going to be arguing in this campaign? And then you have the speakers on Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday reinforce those themes. Provide the hook on Monday and then bring it all together with him closing it out on Thursday. That's how a convention should work. That's how conventions usually do work. But that's not what the Democrats did at this convention. Go back and rewatch Biden's speech. What are the things he talks about? He talks about unity. He talks about love of country. He talks about one nation under God. He talks about nonpartisanship. He talks about moving from lightness into darkness. And I thought, is that racist? Light is good, dark is bad? Well, that's another video. He even ends up with asking people to think about the troops, that God should protect American troops. I mean, this was a, a very patriotic speech, except for the part maybe about climate change, which I disagree with. The rest of it, to me, was pretty good. Very appealing. These are the things I like hearing from politicians. So that was good. But then the question is, are those the things that the Democrats were saying Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? I think not. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if you watched what the Democrats were doing, I didn't hear a lot of talk about protecting our troops or God save the troops. God save America. God bless America. One nation under God. Moving from, from darkness to light. I heard a lot of Trump bashing and Biden bashed Trump as well. But other than that, the impression you get from listening to Michelle Obama, Barack Obama, and any of the speakers in between is that this country is racist. It was founded in racism. It was founded in sexism. It's homophobic. It's Islamophobic. It's all these phobias. And it's not obviously not all Trump's fault. I mean, it's not like suddenly 
in January 2017, the whole nation returned to racism. Nobody really believes that. But Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, it was just terrible. It's a horrible country. People have to protest because, you know, immigrants come in and they have no rights and they got to take to the streets. It was a very negative view of the country, almost dystopian view of the country, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. And then you get to Joe Biden on Thursday, and it's an entirely different story, entirely different themes. I didn't see people Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday talking patriotically, talking about God, about, you know, God bless America, one nation under God. Didn't they? I think I, I read somewhere that they actually, I didn't see it, but they read somewhere that they actually did the Pledge of Allegiance and dropped that part out when they did it, the under God part. I mean, it's a total disconnect between what went on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and Joe Biden's speech on Thursday. And that's the problem. There shouldn't have been a disconnect. And the fact that there is tells you something about what's going on with the Democrats. As I said earlier, the point of the convention should be to sell the candidate. The themes that the candidate's going to pursue should be the themes that are illustrated, that are strengthened, that are brought to your attention in the earlier days so that it all comes together at the end. That's how you sell something. That's how you market something. That's how you pitch something. But they didn't do that. If you look at the themes Biden pushed on Thursday and the themes that were pushed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, there's this huge disconnect. And what that tells me is, since it's the party that organizes this thing, is that they don't really give a shit about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They're expendable. They know they're going to lose. So what they're focusing on is the rest of the party, the down ballot stuff. Make sure they get people out to vote, which was what Obama was pushing Wednesday night. I don't see how you can otherwise explain what we just saw. Three nights of a dystopian, horrible, racist, sexist America, and one night of Joe Biden talking about, you know, God bless the troops and God bless America and one nation under God. There's this disconnect, which means the party doesn't really care about him. In other words, they left him out there hanging with his own themes and his own message, and they ignored those themes and messages on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. So what the party was doing wasn't trying to sell Joe Biden to the American people. They let him try to do that all by himself with the help of Jill, Dr. Jill, excuse me. You don't have to call me Dr. Mike, even though I have a real PhD. Uh, but they're looking out for themselves. That's what they were doing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, showing you all these people who are going to be, you know, the future of the party. And Joe Biden, he could be Dan. Just leave him out there on his own, talking his own nonsense. We know he's going to lose anyway. We're looking at the, the future of the party, not the future of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And if you look at especially just Michelle Obama's address, Barack Obama's address, and I've posted videos on both of them already, and you look at the disconnect between what went on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and what Joe Biden was talking about on Thursday, and you can see that they've given up on him. They know he's going to lose. Eventually, I recovered, made my way to bed, crawled under the covers, put my head on the pillow, laid down. My mind was still racing. And I was laying there, and it suddenly dawned on me that I, I was actually feeling sympathy for Joe Biden. I mean, he clearly exceeded expectations. He'd given a really good speech. I think he fumbled one point, and he couldn't pronounce a word, but he found a synonym, and he threw that in, and it looked pretty adroit doing it. I was pretty much impressed. Well, maybe that's just because I had very low expectations. Nevertheless, I was impressed. He did a good job. But I felt sorry for him because I felt he'd been abandoned. Years ago, we had to give a presentation. I was working for the Army Corps of Engineers. My 
my boss, my immediate boss was pushing a project and he was making a plea for it to higher ups. And when the time came, some of the other people in the room had obviously gotten together and decided they didn't really like this. And instead of supporting him and doing the things they were supposed to do and support, they left him hanging. It was very embarrassing. And that's how I felt about Joe Biden last night, that he had these ideas that he sincerely believes and is pushing, and that's what he wants to run on. But the rest of the party really doesn't share his views. He really is out of step with that party. Even though at times he says things that makes it look like he is, he really is not. And they're entirely out of step with him. I mean, the only thing I think they like him for is that he's not Bernie Sanders, who they think would be even worse, not so much as a candidate, but as far as the results go, the down ballot results. So Joe Biden's the candidate who's still going to lose, but maybe he won't lose as big as Bernie does. And you can see that in how the rest of the thing was put together. They left Joe Biden out there to hang. As I said before, he's expendable. Kamala Harris is expendable. But looking toward the future, and I think it's going to be a future that will include Michelle Obama. But that's for 2024. In any event, those were my reactions to the video. What were yours? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. Uh, if you like the video, hit, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. And until I do, keep fighting.